Hi everyone, my name is Erica and I'm one of the senior physiotherapists and lymphedema therapists here at Peter Mac. And today um, I have the pleasure of talking to you about lymphedema. Um, and what we're going to cover in today's session is um, talking a little bit about the lymphatic system itself and explaining um, what that system does, as well as talking to you about what lymphedema is, um, what the risk factors for developing lymphedema are, and how you can help reduce your risk of developing lymphedema as well as um, looking at the signs and symptoms and where you would go to get a diagnosis. Um, we finish up with some, uh, a final slide with some useful um, links and resources for you as well. Um, so I always like to start with a bit of a diagram as to what the lymphatic system looks like. I think it's really important to get an idea of, of what it looks like and what it does because it helps sort of inform why we do the things that we do when we, we treat lymphedema. Um, so in this picture, you can see that the lymphatic system itself um, is uh, coloured green and it has a series of these little sort of bubble-like things and channels as well. These little bubble-like things are called lymph nodes and um, often are discussed in relation to your uh, cancer treatment. And the channels then are what we call lymphatic channels. And I think the big thing to notice here is that there are certain areas in the body where there are clusters of lymph nodes, so under your arm, for example, around the top of your collarbone and down along your sort of underwear line as well. Um, so there's different clusters throughout the, the body, but also that they are all interconnected. So what I mean by that is that the lymphatic system really is like a series of drains and pipes um, within the body. And what its role is to actually get rid of all the waste material from the cells. So anything that comes out of the cells that we don't want in the body anymore, the lymphatic system's job is to use its series of drains and pipes to shift that fluid away from the cells and eventually get rid of it out of the body. So keep that in the back of your mind while we sort of talk through the rest um, of the presentation. I'd now like to go and talk about what lymphedema actually is. So the definition of lymphedema is that it's a swelling due to the buildup of lymph fluid in the body. And the lymph nodes, like I said in the previous slide, act as like a series of drains and pipes for your sink. And what happens is, is if the drain is clogged, the fluid can't drain properly. And this usually happens in the arms and legs, but can occur in other parts of the body. And that often happens as a result of, um, you know, cancer itself. It can actually um, clog up those drains and pipes that we were talking about, or the treatment as well. So sometimes what can happen as a result of um, surgery or radiotherapy or chemotherapy, we can actually do some damage to the lymphatic system. And that just means that it doesn't work as well as what it used to. Um, in terms of lymph fluid, which is what is circulated throughout the lymph, um, phatic system. Um, lymph fluid is, is part of the lymph system and it carries fluid and cells that help to find infections throughout the body. So sometimes swelling develops quickly or it may develop over several months. What causes lymphedema? As I said previously, lymphedema can be caused by cancer or by cancer treatment. So some examples of this are surgery to remove cancer may also remove some of the lymph nodes and vessels that carry the lymph fluid. And this can cause the fluid to build up in the surrounding areas. For example, if you've had lymph nodes removed from underneath your arm for the treatment of breast cancer or melanoma, you can find that sometimes there is a buildup of fluid around the breast area, across the chest or in the arm itself. Um, radiation treatment can also damage the lymph vessels, resulting in too much fluid in the tissues themselves. And sometimes a cancerous tumour can get big enough to block the lymph system as well. I think it's important to talk about who is at risk of developing lymphedema. Um, so there are sort of four main groups that are more at risk of developing lymphedema due to the type of cancer that they have. Um, so there's breast cancer, melanoma, gynecological cancer and prostate cancer. That does not mean that, you know, if you have a, a diagnosis of cancer outside of those tumour streams that you can't develop lymphedema. It's just that we predominantly see patients presenting with these types of diagnoses and, and that has you know, something to do with the cancer itself, but also the treatments that you receive in relation to those cancers. 
So as I've said, the treatment for these cancers often involves surgery to remove lymph nodes and or radiation, which increases your chance of developing lymphedema. And the risk of developing cancer-related lymphedema after treatment in these cancer groups is about 20%. Um, and I think it's important to sort of note that lymphedema can develop months or even years after the treatment um, for cancer has finished. The signs and symptoms of lymphedema are really important to be familiar with. Um, and some of the symptoms of lymphedema are that your leg or your arm or another part of your body has a little swelling at first, but this gets bigger over time. The skin in the area can feel tight and has a bit of a tingling sensation. Um, the arm or leg that's affected um, can feel quite heavy compared to the other side. You might notice that clothing or jewellery fit more tightly on the affected area. And sometimes the skin can look a little thicker or more leathery. If you notice any swelling during or after cancer treatment, it's really important that you ask your doctor or nurse to arrange a referral to the lymphedema physiotherapist at Peter Mac. So we do have a service here and we have a few, quite a few clinicians trained up um, in the management of lymphedema and we would absolutely love to have you come and see us so that we can have a look through a proper assessment um, and talk you through whether we think you have lymphedema or not. How is lymphedema diagnosed? So um, as we've said, it's really important that you see a doctor right away to find out why you have swelling. There's a number of different reasons as to why you may have swelling. Um, and some of these do require immediate treatment, for example, like a blood clot. Your doctor may also suggest that you have other tests to find out if you have lymphedema and what's causing it. So often lymphedema is a diagnosis of exclusion where we've ruled out other reasons for why you may have swelling in the first instance. Once you've sort of been through that process with the medical team, then hopefully you'll have a referral to see one of our lymphedema therapists here. And if that hasn't been put in place, you're more than welcome to ask your doctor or your nurse coordinator to put one in. And what will happen is that your lymphedema therapist will examine you and ask you when you first notice the problem. We'll also find out um, if your arm and leg was swollen, um, what it looks like compared to the other side. So we'll take some measurements to compare it. Um, and then we'll also use a test called a bioimpedance analysis to measure the amount of fluid in one side compared to the other. And we also use these measures um, to track your progress over time with relation to treatment as well. There are some health problems um, that lymphedema can cause, and I think it's important to sort of be aware of these so that if any of these start to happen for you, that you can actually flag them with your doctor early on and get treatment sooner rather than later. So the first big one is that lymphedema can raise your risk of getting an infection in the swollen area. And this happens because the cells that prevent infection can't reach that part of your body due to the changes in the lymphatic system through treatment or from the cancer itself. You may also notice that wounds may heal more slowly on the part of your body that has lymphedema. Your lymphedema limb may feel heavy, tight, achy or painful. And the joints in the part of the body with the lymphedema may feel stiff or sore. The other big thing to sort of flag is that it is quite common for you to feel quite upset, depressed, embarrassed or angry about the lymphedema itself. And we see this a lot because of the fact that um, a lot of our patients um, have been through their treatment, they've finished their treatment, they are cancer free. Um, and there is that ongoing physical reminder of their diagnosis and the treatment journey that they've been through because they now have this remaining swollen arm or leg. One of the big questions that we get asked is whether lymphedema can be prevented. Um, and I think it's important that before you have surgery or radiation treatment for your cancer, that you ask your doctor or nurse what can be done to lower the chances um, of you you know, getting lymphedema. And also to ask for a referral to the lymphedema screening clinic at Peter Mac. So in this clinic, we actually take measurements um, preoperatively and postoperatively. And advice is given to you to help um, reduce the risk of, of developing lymphedema. 
So how do we reduce your risk? So some of the key um, ways to reducing the risk of developing lymphedema are number one, to prevent infections. So keep your skin on the limb clean and use soap-free washes and lotions to keep it moist. If you get a cut or injury to the limb, clean it right away and apply antibacterial ointment. If you're at all concerned that there may be an infection, seek immediate medical advice. Now, this doesn't have to be through your oncologist. You can actually go to your GP as well. Let them know if your cancer history, um, including surgery, radiation and or chemotherapy, and let them know that you've noticed that you've got um, or are concerned about an area that could be becoming infected and you're concerned that, um, about your risk for developing lymphedema as a result. And if possible, avoid injections or blood tests on the arm at risk. The other thing that you can do is to allow blood or lymph fluid to flow free, freely. So the way that you do that is actually by not wearing tight clothing or jewellery on the affected area. We also recommend that you exercise regularly. Um, so aiming as per the recommendations for about 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week. And then the final thing is to keep your weight in a healthy range. So we do know that you are more at risk of developing lymphedema if you have an increased BMI. How is lymphedema treated? Well, I think the first thing to really um, make clear is that unfortunately at this time, there's no cure for lymphedema. So the goal of our treatment is to reduce the swelling or keep it from getting worse and to relieve the symptoms. And lymphedema treatment can include multiple different things. So there's exercise, which is moving your swollen arm or leg, and that helps with the lymph fluid to drain. And that also then reduces the, the swelling in the area itself. We can use a compression sleeve or stocking. And this is a garment that fits firmly on the swollen area, so the arm or leg, helping the lymph fluid to drain out. There's massage therapy. So this is a special kind of massage called manual lymph drainage and can help move the lymph fluid out of the swollen part of your body and into areas where there's um, the rest of the lymphatic system that's functioning well and can help to clear it. There's things called a pneumatic pump and that's a machine in place um, a sleeve that is placed on your swollen arm or leg and it sort of simulates the manual lymphatic drainage massage that I was talking about previously and that also helps to um, clear the lymph fluid out of the affected area. Weight loss, so in patients who are overweight, your lymphedema may actually improve with weight loss and so that we do encourage that you um, exercise regularly and that you eat well. And surgery finally. So if your lymphedema is severe, your therapist or doctor may suggest lymphedema surgery. Now this is still a relatively new area and it's performed by vascular surgeons. We don't have anyone here at PDMAC that performs these surgeries, but there certainly are people available in Melbourne um, to assist if we think that that's the right pathway for you. I'd like to finish up just with some um, resources that are available to you all. So I put the link for the Australian um, Lymphology Association. And on that website, you can actually find a whole heap of resources for um, practitioners, but also for um, patients as well. Um, I've also put in where to find um, a lymphedema therapist. Um, so it's the same website um, and there is a tab for find a practitioner. You type in your postcode um, and it will actually pull up everyone within a 5, 10, 15, 20 kilometre you can choose um, radius from your home that are licensed practising lymphedema therapists. There's also a support group and it's called the Lymphedema Association of Victoria and there's a website there if you would like to engage in that. Um, and more recently, we've actually had um, a lymphedema compression garment program within Victoria developed where our patients are eligible if they have um, lymphedema in the arms or the legs for four, um, uh, 
four annual applications uh, where you receive $150 compensation for um, your garments because they can be expensive and they do need to be replaced every sort of six to 12 months. And then finally, there's the Cancer Australia website, which I think is always a really good resource. It has a lot of good information about the different types of cancer, but then also talks about lymphedema as well. So that's it for, for me today um, and just a brief overview of what lymphedema is. Um, we are more than happy to see you guys in our lymphedema clinic and would love um, referrals sent our way. So please talk to your doctors or um, nurse coordinators if you have any questions or any concerns or think that you are starting to show any signs and symptoms of lymphedema. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.